playing the jump shot. Is he going for the jump bank? That's what he's gone for. He missed it now. Is it your lucky day or are you going to leave a shot? Well, he's going to leave a pot for Josh. It would have been very easy for Joshua Filler to play an attacking shot on the three ball. The fact that he ducked and played a safe just maybe shows you that he, he knows how important this opening couple of racks are in the match. Nice and comfortable in the first round against Australia's James Georgiadis. Filler won that one 9 3. That was before that Pagalion defeat. And he's not the only filler on the loser's side. His wife, Pia, very accomplished player who he faced on his way to the European Open title last season. She was in action in the first round on the loser side earlier today and went down in a hill hill finish to Dimitros Lukatis, who plays Johan Chua tonight. Yeah, it was hill hill, and he actually broke off and made the nine on the break at hill hill, Michael. So it wasn't in the first visit for Joshua. Joshua Filler. Nevertheless, he leads 1 0. Through his shoulder at that one. Not quite with it at the minute, Josh. That is very unlike him. He's had a few strange misses today in the match against Pagalion earlier. There was that two ball in particular that we couldn't believe he missed. As you say, not typical at all. Oh, that's not good, is it, from Corriere? His first real chance in this match. And he hooks himself. from Corrieri I suppose at least he's left a little bit of distance he has but is there anyone in the game better at this sort of shot than filler glad he potted that one after the build up yeah he played it with a little bit of spin as well that was nicely done Corrieri was handed an absolute gift after that miss on the five from Filler. But couldn't make it count. And Joshua, Joshua Filler has Filler raced away into a 3-0 lead. Well, this could be completely different to the previous rack. Every chance of his second break and run already. Look at that, only two balls potted by Corrieri so far. As we've said, the frustrating thing is he's had the opportunities to pot many more than that. Landed a little bit awkward on this six because now he just hasn't got a natural shot just to float over for the seven. You can see him fuming.
Yeah, he just took his medicine there, just get the cue ball down. Give yourself a shot, back yourself to pot it. May play for the eight in the right centre. If he can hold it, fair enough, he will. And he'll play for the eight in the bottom left. Yeah, he could hold it. When your conversion rate for shots like that is so high, you can afford to back yourself. Leave the slightly more difficult pot. Nothing difficult about this nine, though. And it is going to be his second break and run of the contest. Daniel Corrieri knew he was up against it from the start. Joshua it's Filler looking so, so difficult for him now because Joshua Filler has eased himself in to a 5-0 lead. Mario He has taken the first against Tobias Bongers. Just going back to Sean Nocky, he's just levelled now at two apiece. It's another ball that shouldn't be going in, I'm afraid. Some of these balls in the opening two days are just falling in. I mean, look at this. It should just never go in from that angle. The bottom line is it did go in. It's not going to help Corrieri, is it? That's the problem. <laughs> Well, we did feel at the start of the night that more likely than not, Filler was really going to turn it on after the frustration of not getting through earlier in the day and having to play this match on the loser's side. It wasn't quite like that earlier on, even when he was winning rack after rack. Corrieri really could have made it a different story with the chances he had. But now, Filler is starting to step it up. And with about as easy a nine ball as you're ever going to see, he makes it back-to-back, -back, break and run, and he now leads rack. by six racks to nil. It wasn't easy, in fairness to Josh. I know he looks a bit disappointed, but he really had to dig into the cue ball there. He always is, isn't he, when he misses? He just expects to pot everything. He backs himself all the time. It's a great asset, but at times it gets in his head when it doesn't quite work out for him. Maybe another word from Pia coming up. So having sat out the last two racks, Corrieri. Another decent chance to get off the mark here. It's going to be a combination for his first rack. Yep, Daniel short Lee rack, 7-9 combination rack. to finish. And so the whitewash is, at the very least, averted. Just if you're not familiar with the game of nine ball, so long as you hit the lowest numbered ball on the table, any pot is legal and you stay at the table. So Kazakis win from 7-1 down earlier today. It would be one of the most famous comebacks in World Championship history if Corrieri was to do the same. This time he's got a really good shot on the lowest ball. The red three ball is also down there. So position is well easy. He's had six breaks in this match, and he's won all six racks. And these are just a case of connecting the dots to get yourself on the hill. Good thing for Filler is he can regroup. He can get another good night's sleep because a few players have struggled just because of the jet lag coming from overseas. But he's going to be the one to watch in the draw, Michael, because he's going to come through the left side, isn't he? So them winners, them, them players that have gone through with two wins, they'll be watching where he falls. Well, I mean, he'll be the last player anyone's going to want to get. And that's the thing, he could end up playing Shane Van Boney in Alban Ocean tomorrow. Any of those guys. 
We saw that in action, of course, at the European Open. Filler himself ended up in the last 64 playing excellent catchy. So for the fourth time in this match, Joshua Filler is going to run out from the break. Didn't want to be here for loser's side action tonight, but it doesn't look like he's going to be here much longer. Joshua Filler leads 8-1. He'll Filler be breaking the on the hill when we come back. Oh, he's missed this by a mile. Just not there as accurate as we used to seeing with the pots. I'm not saying it was easy, but we're just so used to seeing the young man smash these balls in, and that is a... Well, you'd have got closer, Michael. See, normally you say that sarcastically. This time I think you might actually be right. But you talk about golfers having tired swings. Well, that was a tired shot from Filler. I think the big thing is you can start to convince yourself you're not feeling great as opposed to digging deep. I mean, Shane's flown in from the derby. He went deep, you know, he got to the final of the nine ball. He was one of the last men standing in that event. And he come and he's, he's looked really good from the get-go. Corrieri, as I've said, performed well on the Euro Tour over the years. Very high standard on that. Got to a couple of finals on it. Back-to-back -back events, in fact, ten years ago. Lost to Konstantin Stepanov and Ralph Suke, who's in action here tonight. Had a quarter-final on the Euro Tour last summer in Austria as well. And he's still hanging on Daniel here. Corrieri Very unlikely to get through, but he has won that one after that wild miss from Filler. It's now 8-2. Speaking of Van Boning, he's had five breaking runs in both of his first two matches. There was a chance Feller could have emulated that, but of course he won't now because he won't be breaking again. Has had four so far. And that will be his final total. see Filler attack the pink four ball. There you go, he's having a look. Jump over the edge of the nine. Try and draw the cue ball into the green six and pop the pink four. Frozen ball. You know, Corrieri's been around for some time, but you look at his career earnings, Carl, and he clearly isn't surviving on those. I know some players do things like coaching around the game as well, but. What sort of percentage of the players we see in these events have other full-time jobs outside of pool? That's a good question. Probably a large part, but a large portion, really, of the field. But, you know, obviously, I'm not sure we're trying to change the sport. But there's still a lot of players that do do it full-time. You know, they have to help us sponsors and stuff like that. Foul stroke. I think that is the end. Corrier is a chance. Ball in hand. Stage in a wonderful comeback. Yeah, and if he does have a day job, I think he's going to be heading back to it now. Big night for him playing Joshua Filler out here on the main table. Hasn't really happened for him.
had his chances early on, and that's the frustrating thing for him. Could have won a couple of the early racks if he had. A bit of pressure had been applied to Filler. It might have been a very different story. Didn't expect Joshua Filler to be involved in losers' qualification. We did expect him to be in the last 64 tomorrow, and he will be. Doesn't even need to pot the final nine. Corrieri comes forward. He trailed 6-0, did get a couple of racks back. But in the end, Joshua Filler, the former champion, is through to tomorrow. He wins by nine racks to two. So while we were discussing the Filler match, I can tell you he's been joined in the last 64 draw by Ruben Bautista from Mexico, who beats Abdullah Al Anzi 9 4. Oh, what a strange Fashion. break off that was. Ball's going in all over the place, including the one that no one wants to see go down. Whiting. Yeah, Shane Walford beating Abdullah Al Yusuf 9 3. Same score as Petri Makinen from Finland overcame Marco Tutor. Yeah. I believe awesome. that's Alex Lely's pronunciation. So the Dutchman going out, Petri Makinen from Finland, who's a very tidy player with a World Cup All in hand. triumph on his CV. He yeah. goes through. And a return of the favour with the cue ball here from, from Dennis. This slower paced Omar is the one I like seeing actually. He can beat you quickly sometimes when he gets going, but it seems like when he makes a big mistake playing fast, it really affects him afterwards. Oh, too much. So three ball in hands and two racks between the two. Two of them off the break, but a big miscue there. And that was prescient, Jeremy. You were saying he dwells on mistakes. That's the kind of thing that gets under his skin. He's a dweller, not a forgetter. Yeah. And it made the journey. like he's just going to stop his ball here for the seven in the lower right. Eight very playable. Well, one especially good positional shot has made this all possible as Grabber stands on the threshold of regaining the lead. He does regain it at 3-2. So here we go then. I've got some news of two players at the opposite end of the age scale. Teenager Khalid Al-Gamdi, he's 4-3 up on... James Jordiadis from Australia. That's on table 13. I'm afraid, though, sad news, I think, for veteran Ralph Suke, out of the event. Defeated 9-6 by Dimitri Jungo from Switzerland. Of course, us being over here, not sure how Ralph played that match. Uh, he told us in an interview that the nerves get to him a little bit, but I wouldn't doubt that Dimitri had a lot to do with that, that loss and us losing another former world champion. Back here on the main stage, looking for our first break and run. And again, Dennis getting better with the break shot, so that's a good sign for the Estonian. Uh, watch the queuing a little bit. Good through impact, 
then a little sometimes a little squirrely afterwards but a little body movement at times but doesn't seem to affect this shot Dennis Gravel wins the rack. Waiting, Dennis. Coming from Mika Imminent. Now, we were talking about breaking in the interview. Look at this. No. The golden break. Just toppling in from Dennis Graver to take that 6 2 lead. Yeah, so often the guys come across the nine and they get an awful kiss with the cue ball disappearing. Now, the, the gold. Gold and black nine ball disappears and the break getting better for Dennis Grave. Yeah, well, he's applied the handcuffs from the start and now he's throwing away the key. Yeah, we'll see if Omar happens to kick out of this, maybe gets a rack if he starts speeding up the play, you know, kind of more like he used to with this big deficit. You can see him kind of walking back to the chair before the balls even really settle. The cue ball, much like Al Shaheen, in a spin. It can take ages for that white to settle down and stop completely. And of course, when there's a 30 second shot clock, it's important that the referee realizes that that is spinning and he takes it into consideration. Oh, absolutely. I think we have the best referees for pool that there is, so. Okay, not taking near as much time as he had. Looks like he has to swerve this a little. Good effort. I think he's gonna get the snooker. Desislava Boshilova from Bulgaria. In line, maybe, in the near future, to possibly officiate the final of the World Championship in the next few years. Yeah, she's as solid as they come. This got a little funny. He's got to make sure he gets past the side, doesn't catch the point. Maybe he has to play the five a little heavy into the long rail. Maybe just a little in, like I said, right before the pocket. And yeah, just like that. Now this is gonna run straight in, so definitely not over with yet. We may see a real first shot on the seven. I'll tell you, a big man that's walking across the arena right now that probably hasn't got talked about as much as he should. And I think last year he showed a lot of form in my eyes. Maybe good just kind of going by under the radar at Eklund Kachi. You know, he was right in that U.S. Open before he made a couple crucial mistakes against Ko Ping Chung in a big match and maybe the final 32 or 16. When the scoreline was 2-2 here, I could see all kinds of outcomes. Couldn't see 9-2 either way, but that's what it's going to be if this nine ball finds the target. And Dennis gaining a lot of confidence with this win. The world Dennis nine Gavin ball championship so runner up in 2021 departs Omar Al Shaheen. Shared the first four racks, then drew a blank. Dennis Grabber winning comfortably and impressively at the end by nine racks to two.